Hello everybody! Okay, I don't know what intro to you, so if you're new here, my name is Jen. I did 10 years in prison. I've been out about two and a half years. I'm so glad that you clicked on my video. I don't know what the hell made you do it, but you made the right decision and I'm glad you did because hopefully you will love my channel so much and we will connect that you will subscribe and give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Somebody pointed out in my comments, y'all, and please, you guys, let me know, like, especially the ones of you that do this, no offense, no pressure, no, you know, obligation, like, really, really straight up, can you tell me why this happens? Somebody uh, commented me and told me in one of the comments, you have almost, you know, 2,500 views on this, but only 130 thumbs up, and so... If you don't know, the YouTube algorithm doesn't so much care about the views. They're important, but it's like the last thing on the list. They more so care about the comments, the thumbs up, the sharing, the interaction, okay? When someone goes out of their way to interact. So giving a thumbs up or commenting or anything like that, it doesn't cost you guys anything. It's completely free, but most people are like watching and not doing the thumbs up. So if you're one of those people, can you tell me like, are you not liking it? Are you not connecting? Do I not say it enough at the end of the video? Am I not pushy enough because I don't like to be? Um, just let me know what you guys think. Where am I going wrong with that? Because I honestly don't know. Okay, if you are a returning subscriber, thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here once again. I'm sorry that this took so damn long and I missed two weeks. Do y'all want to know why I missed two weeks? Of course you want to know why I missed two weeks. You know why? Because you guys care about me just like I care about you. And if you don't, we're going to pretend like you do because it makes my heart feel better. So check this out. I got the vid. Yeah, y'all heard me right. I got the damn vid. The vid, the COVID, the COVID-19. Oh yeah, and it wasn't like the, you know, oh, my chest hurts, I can't really breathe, but it feels more like a flu and my body aches. No, 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 no. It was knocked down, drag out, kicking my ass laying down with 103 fever for multiple days on end, not knowing what the hell was going on. Finally, my mother brought me a COVID test over. The bitch was positive. I was mortified. Mortified. How am I going to film a video with 103 fever in the vid? Some of the big YouTubers do it, but honey, they get paid to do it. Okay? As for me and this house, I needed rest. Rest and relaxation. So anyways, that's why I was MIA for two weeks, okay? Just letting y'all know. Don't think I'm trying to be inconsistent. So, let's get right into today's video, okay? Done. Enough with the BS. Let's go. There are some very interesting and funny things I want to tell you guys, okay, regarding prison. Now, I don't know how I'm going to title this because I have not created the title yet, okay? However, I... I'm either going to say some prison rules or some prison habits or some strange things that happen in prison. Either way it goes, the gist of it is these aren't rules. You don't have to do them. But they're strange things that become habits. And if you don't do, people will talk about you like a sh eating dog. Okay. I said a sh eating dog. Okay. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Y'all catch my vibe? They're going to talk about you like, huh, baby, you don't want the people that you live with for any amount of time talking about you with this narrative behind it because they're going to talk about you are a dirty bird, right? Okay, so they are habits, they are rules, and they're just strange things all rolled up into one weird fucking burrito of prison world, right? So I'm going to tell you guys the 10 most strange, peculiar habits rules and things that if you do not do while you are incarcerated you will surely be talked about in a very negative way now when you get to prison some of these things you're not going to know you might notice other people doing it you might be told about it but it's going to take a good month for you to really notice every single one of these and start trying to put them into use, okay? You're gonna start practicing these habits, these rules, whatever you wanna call them, but you're not gonna know them right away. So in the beginning, you're gonna go through a couple little odd, maybe embarrassing, you know, moments where you're learning these things. 
Here they are. Starting with number one, the do. When you're doing the do, the number two, the turtle, the dropping the kids off at the pool, the putting the frogs in the pond, the turtle burtle, dropping deuces, whatever you refer to it as, when you're taking a shit, you are required, if you do not want to be bad-mouthed, to courtesy flush. Now, I don't know if courtesy flushing is something in the real world, or if courtesy flushing is just something in prison, but in prison, it is absolutely essential. There are a long line of prison toilets, okay? When I say prison toilets, they're regular toilets. I don't know why she called them, called them prison toilets, but anyways, there's a long line of toilets separated by like a little four foot high wall in some. Some there's not any wall. And essentially, you're about two feet away on either side from another human being who's also dropping their kids off at the pool or draining their lizard. Well, we don't have lizards, but I guess squeezing their petunia. I don't know. Whatever the hell you want to call it. When they're doing that, nobody wants to smell your dump particles. Nobody wants to smell any kind of particles. Nobody wants to smell your coochie rocks, okay? Nobody wants to do that. So what you are required to do is be an avid courtesy flusher, okay? avid and active when the turd is coming out of the exit portal okay your hand better be on that nozzle hitting the button so that as the turd is dropping you're pushing the flush button and the turd is immediately getting sucked in because if that turd hits the water and somebody caches caches that's that's cute somebody catches a whiff of that turtle burtle baby not only are they going to talk about you after you guys exit the bathroom but they're also going to make a big deal in the bathroom they're going to do something like this uh-uh mm, mm, mm. why are you gomez why are you doing that no come on man courtesy flush what is that why wouldn't you courtesy flush and they're going to be loud and they're going to be embarrassing and they're going to talk about it okay at which point you're going to courtesy flush everyone's going to hear it they're going to know it's you and it's just like really embarrassing so, first thing that you have to do in prison is courtesy flush, okay? As soon as that turd starts going through that little portal, you better be hitting that button, baby, okay? Moving right along. The next thing that you are going to want to be conscious of, and this is very fucking weird, and I'm so, like, I don't even know, but to this day, this is a habit I still have. I cannot wear a shirt even if it's a like a sleepy nighttime t-shirt i don't care I, I can't do it it's not happening i know y'all are like what what's not happening i'm about to tell you okay chill calm down it's coming here it comes okay if you are familiar with the prison uniforms you will know that there is an outer blue uniform called your class a it's like this like polyester yucky like shirt and these pants with these white stripes okay but underneath that shirt the blue shirt you are required to wear an undershirt some people do some people don't it's a preference thing but most people do the undershirt is going to be white or gray okay You will either buy it from canteen or you will get it issued from the prison. Now, the shirt underneath, the white shirt or the gray shirt, this is a shirt that's getting washed regularly because you're only allowed to have so many shirts. I'm not sure, but I want to say it's four. So if you're only allowed to have four t-shirts and they're seven days a week and you're wearing these t-shirts every day under your uniform and to recreation to do any kind of activities, then the shirt, it's getting washed every day for some people for me it was every day I wash my shirts every day and for other people it was you know every couple of days but for the most part it's every day okay now most people wash their clothes by hand and in turn when they wash their clothes by hand they have to wring them out what happens when you continuously wring a shirt well I'll tell you what happens if you don't know because you probably don't because you probably never wash a shirt by hand but me I have so after 10 years of washing shirts by hand what happens is your neck get stretched out okay the little neck part this part right here gets stretched out 
by constantly doing this, okay? What happens when your neck gets stretched out is you got loose neck. And loose neck is a sign that, this is so stupid too. I don't even know why this is like this, but loose neck is like a sign that you're not well put together. You're kind of dirty and junky. You don't really care about your appearance and you're just not one of like, you know, the, the top notch fashionistas in the prison world, okay? Nobody that's anybody in the fashion world of prison has loose neck, okay? Let me insert a picture of loose neck right now, okay? You can't have that. If you have loose neck, people are not gonna take you seriously. You're not gonna find a girlfriend in there. You're going to have a certain... You will be classified in a certain social ranking that isn't going to be very high because you have loose neck, which is indicative that you don't take care of yourself, you don't take care of your things, you don't have the money to get new things, your stuff's old, um, you have maybe hand-me-downs, things like that, okay? And you don't want to be in that social prison ranking. So loose neck is something that will get you the hell talked about. I promise. There are some things people do to combat loose neck whenever they don't have the money to just replace their shirts continuously. And one of them is very interesting. They will actually get somebody in there that sews, like one of the little tailors or seamstresses in the prison. And they will take the neck right here. I'm going to look in the camera so I can show you guys. They'll take the neck part and they'll put a little slit in it. But they'll do it in the back portion, okay? So they'll put a little slit in it, and they will put a little slit on both sides, and they will run a piece of elastic that they have taken off of the panties. The panties have elastic around the band. They will take that band, and they will run it through the neck. They will pull both pieces out, just kind of like drawstrings on sweatpants. They will sew those two pieces together so the neck is, you know, fairly tight and then loose neck will no longer be loose neck but then you have this you have people walking around like this like a turtleneck and it's all scrunchy scrunchy like this because it's elastic it's so ridiculous like I know some people do that because you know they want to avoid loose neck but I'm telling y'all it is the most comical thing I've ever seen in my life like it looks like the person's being choked it looks like they, they can't breathe for one and then it's all scrunchy and most of them are studs and oh my god it's just so embarrassing I, I'm so I'm so embarrassed right now I never had that I always bought new shirts thank you God for you know allowing me to have the things I had but babies it was serious so do not ever have loose neck in prison y'all aren't ever going to prison but I'm just saying loose neck is a no-go yeah loose neck no go. Okay. So the next thing that you want to be aware and conscious of, and I was guilty of this in the beginning because I just didn't know any better. It's going to kind of piggyback off of what we were just talking about with the loose neck. There is a prison laundry system. Okay. It's utterly disgusting. It's run by inmates. Basically every dorm has a huge buggy, like a huge cart. It's just like this huge buggy that you push that fits a lot of stuff inside of it, okay? Now, everybody is issued a laundry bag. The laundry bag is just a mesh, you know, small bag that you can put your clothes in. You tie it at the top. You put your dirty clothes in it every night or every morning. And around 5 a.m., the buggy with all the dirty laundry is picked up by inmates, okay? It is then taken away to the laundry world, disgusting ugh, land, and inmates wash all your clothes. Now, when I say wash, I use that term very loosely because these are like two, three, four, five minute cycles on these huge industrial washing machines and dryers. And the soap is like, I don't even know if it's soap, to be honest with you. It could just be like a little bit of hand sanitizer they use. Whoever even really knows. There's no bleach used. There's no nothing. There's like this little like disinfectant that's used or whatever. But the point is inmates don't even run the machines all the way through the cycles for the most part because the earlier they get finished with the entire compound's laundry, the earlier they get off work. So imagine having to wash 1,500 women's laundry bags 
between 5 a.m. and 10. You want to get out of there. So that six-minute cycle that's washing those laundry bags, oh, baby, it just turned into a three-minute cycle. And your panties just swooshed around with dirty panty water from the girl down the way that scratches her coochie rockets all the time, okay? Do you really want roast beef juice on your pillowcase? Hell no. You don't. I don't. I mean, I, speaking for myself, I don't, okay? So I never thought of, like, the logistics and how everything goes down with the laundry and how it moves from one machine to the other and whatever. And I never really thought about like the water it's being soaked in like, ugh, it's so gross. A lot of times the stuff comes back dingy and brown. A lot of time the stuff comes back smelling really functified. So you do not put your stuff in outside laundry, like the compound laundry. If you are a respectable person, if you're a respectable inmate, if you're a respectable person in prison, if you're clean and your hygiene is on point, if you want people to know that you are somebody who doesn't stink and who takes care of themselves, then you don't put your laundry in that buggy. You wash it by hand every night, either in the sink or in the shower. That's how you get those loose necks. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you don't do it. You don't do it. Your stuff gets stolen also on top of that. People will open bags and look for canteen clothing items and steal it out of your bag. And then you've sent a white shirt to laundry and it comes back and it's tan. Ugh. It's so gross. So, you don't do that. It's so bad, you guys, that one time I had this friend and she had a girlfriend, right? And my friend didn't really know this girl very well and neither did I. But my friend came and told me one time, hey, it's really odd. Like her socks are always dingy, but she doesn't send her stuff out to laundry. So I don't know what's going on. Because let me tell you something, sending your stuff out to laundry can be a deal breaker if you're in a relationship in prison. It's that serious, y'all. I'm not even kidding. So she was like, her socks are always dingy, but she doesn't send her stuff out to laundry. So one day, my friend and I came back because we both worked in education. We came back to the dorm early that day and the laundry girl was passing out laundry, right? In that dorm. And you will not believe it. She had a bag of socks and my friend was sitting on her girlfriend's bed and the laundry girl dropped the bag of socks on the bed. And my friend was like, hey, this isn't this isn't so-and-so. Her name was Kayla. Ja'Kayla. She was like, these aren't Ja'Kayla's socks. And the girl was like, yes, it is because all the bags have bed numbers on them, right? So you know where to put the bag. So it's like, yeah, here's her bunk number right here. And my friend was like, oh, my God. So my friend confronted her when she came back into the dorm. And she hurried up and threw them under her pillow and was like, those aren't mine. Those are my friend. I just let her use my bag. She said she let her friend use her bag and they were hers. They weren't hers so anyways my friends ended up breaking up with this girl because the girl sent her socks out to laundry come to find out the girl was also sending her panties out to laundry in her other friend in her friend's bag and she always washed her body with her hand which will lead me into the next thing okay it's crazy y'all it's serious don't get caught slipping do not send your laundry to outside laundry in prison you will get talked about like a sh eaten dog okay theme of the day don't get talked about like a shit-eating dog. But you will if you send your stuff out to laundry. Moving right along, we have the next thing. When you shower, okay, which most of the time people call it bathing. They're like, you gonna bathe, girl. You gonna bathe. You gonna bathe. You bathed. You bathed. I don't know what bathed is, like B-A-Z-E-D, but I bathed, okay? I bathed. But when you're bathing or taking a shower like a normal outside world or people's will say you better have a washcloth you better cut up a towel you better spend the dollar oh nine on a washcloth do something take a sock i don't care do something don't get caught in the shower washing with your hand okay now i'm not a hand washer anyways i don't feel like you can exfoliate properly without using some sort of device some sort of shower tool i don't feel like your hand gets it i don't feel like you're scrubbing the dead skin cells off i don't think you need to scrub a layer of skin off to be clean but you do in my opinion need some sort of like tool to exfoliate it's just my personal opinion there's all kinds of arguments and theories about this we're not going to go down a rabbit hole they say that you know washcloths carry bacteria and germs i can see that as well i can see that point but 
but whatever the case may be, I'm just talking about prison land, prison world right now, okay? That's all we're talking about. And in prison world, don't get caught showering and washing with your hands, okay? Don't do it. Walk into that bathroom with the washcloth and use it because people watch. People will watch and see. You got to remember when you first get to prison, everything is an observation game when it comes to the new people. Everyone's watching how you move, what you do, how your hygiene is, how much money you spend. What do you get at canteen? Do you use the phone? Do you have visits? Do you talk to staff too much? Do you seem like you're going to be a snitch? Do you seem like you're going to be a hoe? Do you seem like you're going to be a problem? Are you a bully? Are you passive? Can you be taken advantage of? Can I rob you? Can I get you to buy things for me because you're just such a pushover? Everything is being watched. Everything's being documented mentally and everything you do is creating the image image of the person that you're going to become in prison, the image that you're going to have, and the place where you're going to rank in the social ladder of the prison world, okay? If you have a while to do, if you have some years to do, you want to establish a pretty good social ranking in the prison world because your time will just be done more easy. Yeah, sure, you could go in there and say, F all of you. I don't care if y'all think that I'm dirty because I wash with my hand or I send my stuff out to laundry. That's what I want to do and that's what I'm going to do it. You can do that. You're more than welcome to. But your time is going to be done in a more difficult fashion. You're not going to have the connections, the friends, the allies, the doors opening that you need to have. Because to be real in prison, you need to have some connections and some allies in order for your time to be done easy and in order for you to move around the way you want to. Eventually in prison, you're going to need to grease some palms and yours are going to be greased in return. You're going to need to be connected in some way to get around and be comfortable. And that's just the truth truth. It's just, it's just the logistics of it. Okay. There's a hierarchy and you want to place somewhere in that hierarchy. Okay. So yeah, you can say, you can say all this and go about your business, but you don't really want to do that. You want to do your time easy. So when you're in the shower, they're going to watch you and you don't need to be bathing and washing with your hand. Okay. Get a washcloth, get a washcloth, ladies. That's all I got to say. Okay. Now, that is also going to piggyback into the next thing, which is showering, okay? There's two little aspects to the showering rule habit thing that I'm gonna talk about. The first one is when you are in a shower and you are showering, you want to bathe twice. You want to lather twice. You want to go through the whole process, not your hair, not washing your hair, but the body washing, you want to bathe twice, okay? You want to do that because prison, you know, you move around a lot and people get hot and sweaty and it's just kind of like somehow somewhere out there, someone came up with the theory that after the first wash, you're just not clean. You're kind of getting the dirt off, but you need like a rinse cycle. Okay. So it's kind of like the washing machine. You know, you wash, you rinse, you spin, all that. People will look at you funny if you don't bathe twice. That's not as heavy of a rule as the next one, but bathing twice will definitely get you some brownie points in the hygiene department. So it is a good thing to do, even if you don't want to do it. I stopped doing it towards the end of my sentence. I knew my ass was clean after one wash. I know I'm clean and I didn't need to bathe twice. I didn't need to lather up twice. I'm a very clean person and I just, there was no need for it. Okay. It was wasting soap and it was scratching my skin up with this prickly little washcloth. So whatever. But anyways. The next showering facet is super important. The next rule or habit for showering that's included in the one I was just talking about is super important. This is actually one of the biggest, biggest and most serious rule slash habits that you will want to follow in prison. If you don't do this, it's, it's a big deal. If you do nothing else I've said, if you abandon every other rule, every other habit that I've mentioned in this video, this is the one that if you hear nothing else, you hear this, okay? This is it right here. This is, this is the golden egg, all right? You must, I repeat, you must, not you should, not it's better if, you must take two showers a day. You must bathe twice every day, okay? You must shower twice a day, every day. I shit y'all not. Now, I agree with this rule. 
and I, it's so weird because I still do it to this moment. And if you guys have been in prison, if anybody watching has been in prison, let me know if y'all still do it too, because I feel like a lot of people that have been in prison still do this, but I still do it. Number one, we live in Florida. It's already hot. It's already humid. It's already icky. Okay. But aside from that, I don't know if you guys are aware in Florida state prisons, especially at Lowell, most of the dorms do not have air conditioning. At Lowell, there is only two on the main unit that have air conditioning. That's it. Two dorms. A couple hundred women get AC. Like, like 200. Not a couple, like not 400. Now, I'm not saying a couple. It, I'm literally saying a couple. Like 200 women are in AC dorms. The rest are just in a big dorm with a bunch of windows and some ceiling fans. There's no AC. You have to walk everywhere you go in prison. And the compound is pretty large. You're wearing long sleeve, long sleeve, you're wearing long pants, polyester pants all day, a polyester shirt all day with a 100% cotton t-shirt underneath and a bra. Then you're wearing socks that are tube socks and bloomer panties. You are suited up. You're, you're geared up. You're not walking around in shorts and a tank top. You have a lot of layers of clothes on. You're walking everywhere you go. You're constantly waiting in lines outside in the beaming sun. You go to rack outside in a big cow pasture, okay? You are moving and walking all day. Your pitties are sweating. Your coochie is sweating. Your toes are sweating. Your scalp is sweating. If you have long hair, you're sweating, okay? Every fold in your body is sweating. Every orifice and crevices is sweating. People are musty. People are stinky. People are stank. People smell like bouffale. People smell like coochie rabbits. People smell like all kinds of stuff. Okay, it's nasty. So when you get in at night and you have all that stank on you, you take a shower and most people do. But this is the other shower where eh, it's, it's questionable, but for me it was a must. In the morning, most people do shower in the morning when they wake up, but some people are like, hey, I just showered last night. All I did was lay down in my bed and go to sleep. I didn't do anything. I don't need to shower. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You, you didn't do anything, but you did. But you, your body did. Your body did something. Want to know what your body did? It laid in a 110 degree dorm with you covered up because you cover up when you sleep. Most people do. It's just natural. You covered up. You sweat when you're covered up and you're in a hundred degree dorm with just a little breeze blowing on you that's like a blow dryer. It's like a big shitty blow dryer blowing like on you, okay? These little tiny home ceiling fans blowing on you in the middle of July and you're sleeping with a sheet covering you, some people with the blanket as well. Your coochie's sweating. Your pitties are sweating. Your titties are sweating. Your ear holes are sweating. Everything's sweating. And then you wake up and you just go to work for the day. No, 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 no. Get your ass in the shower. Get yourself a little wake up. It helps you wake up too. It helps you start your day. Best part of waking up. So you need to shower in the morning, okay? Shower in the morning to wake up and just to get the night sweat off of you. Some people are on their period during the night. They wake up, they change their sanitary stuff, their tampons or pads. Now you've been sweaty and bleeding all night. Some people pee throughout the night. Got that little musty chicken noodle residue down there like you need to shower in the morning you just need to do it you need to wash off okay you need to wash off wash off girlfriend wash off so you got your morning shower to get the day started and you got your night shower because you've been walking around all day you've been sweating you've been bleeding you've been pissing you've been shitting you've been walking talking to friends your hair has been sweating everything you need to bathe you need to shower twice a day in prison ac or no ac you need to shower Okay, you just need to. If you do not shower a day, you won't get talked about like a sh eating dog. Um, yeah, you're just, you're going to have some issues. You're going to have some issues, y'all. Just shower twice a day, okay? That's all. That's all. Make sure you shower in the morning. Make sure you shower at night. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's non-negotiable. Okay? The next thing is you don't want to have dingy sheets. You are issued white sheets when you get to prison. Hopefully, you get new white sheets. And if you wash your sheets once a week by hand in the sink, you should be okay. You should keep them white. It should be all right. If your sheet starts to turn brown or dingy or any sort of variation of cream or tan, you are either dirty, you're laying in your bed dirty, you're sending your sheets to outside laundry, 
or you were issued dirty, dingy sheets from the beginning, in which case you need to hurry up and pay the $2 for somebody to steal you some new sheets out of laundry so you can get them so you don't get talked about. But if you're issued new sheets or if you get new sheets, your sheets should never be dingy. And let me remind you, everyone can see your bunk because your bed is made where there is a cuff and everybody can see your bottom sheet and your top sheet with your bed made. So if your sheets are dingy, you're either laying in your bed while your body is dirty, like physically shedding skin cells that are dirty, and that's gross and people are gonna talk about you, nobody's gonna wanna sit in your bed or they're just gonna talk about you. Or you're not washing your sheets properly. You're sending them out to laundry or you're washing them in the sink and you're only half-ass washing them and they're dingy. Don't get caught slipping. Don't get caught with dingy sheets, y'all. You will get talked about like a eating dog. Y'all already knew what I was gonna say, but it is what it is, it's what it is, okay? Don't get caught with dingy sheets. Next, we're gonna go to the lips and the eyes, okay? More so the lips. You need to buy a chapstick when you get there. Prison is a place where you'll become very dehydrated, it's very hot, your lips will become crusty. Your eyes could become crusty, but more so your lips. Do not get caught talking to people with crusty lips. They will think you don't care about yourself, you don't care about your hygiene, you don't care about your appearance. You need to have hydrated lips at all times, okay? It's gross, it's distracting, people don't like it, and people will talk about you. So make sure your lips are moisturized and your eyes are clean because that is something that people will talk about and they will talk about you like a... You got it, y'all said it, did y'all say it for me? Like a sh eating dog, okay? Moisturize your lips. Clean your eyeballs, okay? No eye boogies, no eye boogies over here. Okay, we've got two left. The next one is dirty shoes, okay? Shoes are indicative of your economic status, how much money you get, how rich you are, how prison rich you are, how much you can afford to just buy shoes over and over again every time that you have the opportunity because you could very well be able to buy shoes once, but maybe the next time that catalog comes out, you don't have enough money. You might get food, but you might not have enough for shoes. So you always wanna keep your shoes clean because if you have dirty shoes, it's, it's pretty much like if you have a loose neck or dingy sheets. You don't care about yourself, you don't care about your clothes, you don't care about your hygiene, you don't care about your appearance, and you could have a great uniform and be on point with everything else. If your shoes are dirty, you're gonna get talked about. You'd go in the bathroom, you do a quick little wash with the toothbrush, some toothpaste, you scrub the sides, the soles, get them clean. Only shoes they sell are white, so they get very dirty very quickly. You want to take care of those shoes. You want to preserve them as long as possible so that people don't talk about you like a sh eaten dog. So keep your shoes clean, it's very important, okay? Last but not least, and arguably one of the biggest hygiene rules slash habits of everything I've talked about, okay, is this. When I say hygiene, I'm talking about like the actual skincare, self-care, smelly care part of it. I'm going to end this video and show you guys with a clip that I'm going to take from my phone right after this. And I'm going to show you guys how they do it because it's so utterly ridiculous and hilarious and I can't even believe I did it at one point in time, but I did. Okay? Okay. One of the things that you will do, and you will do this if you want to be even remotely referred to as a clean individual, which is very important in prison. In prison, being clean and being known as being clean is super important, okay? So if you want to be in the clean category, you will do this. You, you might stop later on. You might not do it as much in the winter time. You might not do it as much at the end of your sentence or after you've been down 10, 15 years, but in the beginning, you will do this. Hands down, you'll do it. Baby powder, okay? I don't know why. I don't know who started this. I don't know if this happens in other prisons. I don't know if the ridiculous madness behind this whole movement is real or effective or not. I don't, I don't know. It's so out there, but it's so something that's done. And it, it works a little bit, but anyways. Baby powder is something that is used to absorb all the sweaty oils throughout the day in prison, okay? Now, it's used in many ways. It's used to absorb oil in your scalp. So if your scalp's dirty or oily, you know, you put a little baby powder in there and you absorb it. Um, they don't sell face powder makeup in prison. So, you know, if your skin is oily, little baby powder on your face, rub it in. But one of the main places that baby powder is used in prison is on your neck, 
in your armpits, okay? This is something that is so crazy. I can't wait till you guys see the clip that I'm going to insert right after this because it's ridiculous. People will literally take the baby powder, go like this, dump it down their shirt, dump it on their neck, rub it in, throw it in their armpits, put it in their hand, put it in their armpits, put it in their hand again, rub it everywhere, and they will be walking around with a neck brace that is white. You will see every person walking around with a solid white neck. I mean, you could literally flick their neck and it would go Literally, if you took their shirt and went like this, it would. It just goes, it always goes When they're walking, there's just particles in the air floating around them. Baby powder is for real in prison. It's so serious. It is, it's, it's an absorbent. And in the summertime, oh y'all, it's no joke. It's no joke. Baby powder neck in full effect, okay? If you guys have ever seen someone in public with baby powder on their neck, just know it came from prison because I don't think this happens anywhere else. And hopefully they're not still doing it. But if they are, God bless them. If you're out there and you're still doing it, God bless you because baby, you don't have to do it anymore. Okay. Now they sell deodorant in prison, but I don't know. It's just like something that's done. It's crazy. And it's so much of it. Like it's a whole neck brace. I'm not shitting y'all. It's crazy. But especially in the beginning when you get to prison until you are established as a clean person you need to baby powder up okay you, you just need to okay do it for the first couple years then you can slide out of the habit if you don't like it yes it gets all over your clothes but you can just shake it out and you know wipe it off and it, it, get, it comes right off it's not a big deal so those are the habits slash prison rules slash interesting but odd things that are done in prison that need to be done don't get caught slipping don't get caught doing any of this or not doing any of this Got to stay on your toes in prison, but y'all are never going to prison, so y'all just watch this for entertainment purposes only, okay? Not educational because y'all don't need to know. Entertainment purposes only. Y'all enjoy it. Y'all laugh at the craziness and ridiculousness of it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you a little insight into some of the strangeness of prison land. If you did enjoy the video, here it is. Guys, please give me a thumbs up, okay? If you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs down. Give me some kind of feedback. It helps. It helps. It's free for you, but it's a great way to help support the channel. Right now, if you haven't done it, please mash that like button. If you haven't subscribed and you like my content and you vibe with me, please hit the subscribe button. I am a single mom and I'm trying to do the best I can to be consistent, but sometimes life happens like the damn cove that I just got, the COVID. Um, but nonetheless, I am not going anywhere. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. If you watch any of my old videos, you know why I say I love you. It's not just some cliche thing I'm throwing out there like some people. Like, I love you guys because I cannot believe that I have a platform to connect with people I don't know and really feel a genuine connection because I don't have a lot of friends right now like I'm really trying to just move forward in life from the decade that I missed in prison and care for my son and provide for him the best way I can and I just I don't have a lot of time so when I read y'all's comments whether I have responded yet or not because I try to sit down every couple you know like every week and a half or so and just respond to everybody um I read them and I see them and they make me happy and like I said I don't have a lot of friends right now so it really it touches my heart it means more than y'all know I promise you that is why I say I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. And I will catch y'all in my next video, okay? Love y'all. See you later. Okay, guys. This is how it goes. It's not enough. Drop a little bit down their pants. And pretty much this is how everyone walks around. But imagine with a shirt on. Yeah, this is it, guys. Is this not ridiculousness? Oh, and it usually is creeping up right here onto your face. I mean, it's just utter ridiculousness, okay? And then after this, they kind of just like puff their shirts out or their clothes to get it off, you know, do a little wipe. And um, yeah, this is what you see right here. This is it. There you have it, guys. So there you have it. That is the baby powder neck overdose. Love y'all. When it rains, it pours. Ooh, I sounded country. Mm. Mm -mm, not cute, Jen. Not cute at all. Okay. Moving right along. Let's click with right away. That'll put you up on. What? Put you up on, sir.
That doesn't even sound like English. Are you freaking kidding me? Really? Got my hair stuck in my armpit. That's great. Okay. Okay, focus. Okay. I'm not going to do another two. Uh, uh. See, so, well, that being said, let's go and jump into. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot to. You know what? That's crazy. How did I just forget to thank the people that have been here with me? Hello. <laughs> Dropping the pebbles in the retention. Damn, it's just like one thing comes after a damn another. It showers in the cup. Let's go. Let's go. I, I don't know why I just did like a turn. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, yeah. Okay. So. How do I... I could have said something way better than that, but whatever. We're not, we're not even going to go there. 